This is 7 News, the voice of the New England. Tonight, Tamworth Regional Council will vote whether to raise their rates. A flood watch is in place for the Peel and Namoy catchments. I'm Daniel Gibson. Later on this news hour, the hunt for an asylum seeker that's on the run, refusing to wear his tracker. And a truce between Hamas and Israel extended to release even more hostages. 7 News begins now. Good evening. After months of community consultation, Tamworth Regional Council will vote on whether to go ahead with their application to the Independent Pricing and Regulatory Tribunal for a rate rise. Ratepayers will be attending the meeting, with some sharing their concerns over the proposed 36.3% rate increase. Tamworth Regional Council's proposed rate of 36.3% over the two years has been labelled highway robbery. Residents calling projects Skywalk and Aquatic Centre a waste of money. Oh, I think it's ridiculous really, but they need to learn to live within their means like we do. It's a lot of extravagant um, things they're building around the place that I'm wondering in this climate we're in, is that really uh, what we need at the moment? I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's high enough as it is. In Council's submission to the Independent Pricing and Regulatory Tribunal, it states that without the rate increase, they will go into financial deficit, which means major cuts would need to be made. Obviously, we'd have to look at the operations of Council, um, the costs in relation to projects and things like that. I guess look at everything that Council currently provides to the members of the community and see what we could actually cut. Real estate agent Sam Spokes has concerns for the property market if the rate increase is approved. Trying to encourage development in Tamworth, we're trying to encourage people to come here and we already do have high rates, uh, you know, so investors are less likely to pick Tamworth as a, as a place of purchasing. Renters could see a spike in monthly repayments as a roll-on effect. The numbers just don't add up. People will go to other towns and, and will lose that you know, potential in investment into Tamworth. Tamworth's median house price is currently $480,000. If the rate rise receives the green light, homeowners will be paying an extra $615 annually. IPART will make the final decision, but Councillor Rodda isn't confident it will be approved. I think they look at our region and think that many of our ratepayers do not have the capacity to pay. Olivia Babb, 7 News. Councillors will vote tonight on whether they will go ahead with their application to IPART. Olivia Babb is in Tamworth for us and Olivia, is council expecting a significant turnout? They certainly are, Nick. They've moved the meeting to Town Hall as they're predicting a large amount of residents to attend. It's been a divisive topic within the community for several months and now councillors will decide whether ratepayers will be required to pay higher rates next year. A few members of the public will be speaking on the matter and sharing their concerns. It'll be kicking off in half an hour and by then we should have a decision. It certainly is a hot topic. Thanks, Olivia. That's Olivia Babb reporting for us in Tamworth tonight. Country mayors are calling out the federal government over their deal with the Greens overhauling the Murray-Darling Basin plan. The amendment includes voluntary water buybacks, allowing the government to recover an additional 450 gigalitres of water for the environment. Mayors across the Murray-Darling Basin hitting out against the federal government over the recent deal struck with the Greens. It's a major step forward in their quest to pass the Water Amendment, restoring our rivers bill through the Senate. It is a real slap in the face for uh, regional New South Wales. It's a slap in the face for our small country towns. The Water Minister of the day can decide where the water comes from, when and how much they'll pay. That's that's really frightening for people who rely on water for their livelihoods. The restored bill could see more than 700 gigalitres of water used each year for farming back into the environment through voluntary purchase of water entitlements. They really don't re know where their buybacks are going to end. Uh, I think there's some confusion because we don't know where they're going to occur. For farmers and irrigators, concerns lie with water security and the flow and effects from this legislation. This legislation is terrible. It takes away all the socioeconomic protections um, and, and basically means that there can be a buyback. 
free for all uh, and communities will be destroyed. In a statement to Seven News, Minister for Environment and Water Tanya Plibersek says having a healthy river system is an objective she hopes all stakeholders share. And once you take, once you overdo it by taking so much water out of the system, then, then your, your whole farming enterprise becomes unproductive. Hugh Pearson, Seven News. Financial support is now available for the natural disaster declared for the Walgett Council area after being devastated by a bushfire earlier this month. More than 20,000 hectares of land was scorched by the Hudson Fire, destroying buildings, farmland and mining equipment. The state's Rural Assistance Authority say after the natural disaster declaration, there are thousands of dollars worth of loans and subsidies available for affected land and business owners. Tamworth Regional Council will vote on a voluntary planning agreement for renewable energy projects during tonight's council meeting. Councillors say the number of projects are increasing, which could have major impacts on the environment, community, infrastructure and agricultural land. Renewable energy projects have been a contentious issue in the New England region. Tamworth Regional Council has objected twice to planning New South Wales approval of NG's Hills of Gold wind farm. Now there's a voluntary planning agreement to be voted on. But some councillors say we need to wait before anything is agreed on. Uh, and I think it's premature. What, what, the, I know planning New South Wales want us to enter into a voluntary planning agreement with NG prior to them potentially recommending approval of the project and I think that's quite premature. A VPA is a legal document between the developer and a planning authority. NG is required to pay a monetary contribution to the council, which consists of a 1.5% capital investment value equaling $9.6 million. They should be making their recommendations to the Independent Planning Commission and then if the IPC recommend approval, then we can come back and actually uh, you know, negotiate a deal with NG. The Thunderbolt Wind Farm and the Hills of Gold project are nearing the final stage and will be referred to the Independent Planning Commission. Council is advised to specify the terms of a VPA if the proposal is approved. Councillor Rodder says there's much to consider for him and his fellow councillors. Uh, impacts on, uh, on uh, the environment, uh, impacts on uh, the heritage of the region, of the region, impacts on the, uh, uh, the um, amenity of the region. NG were contacted for this story but declined to comment. Hugh Pearson, 7 News. Um, and our regional council say they've filled more than 10,000 potholes in recent months. Council crews continue to fix the road network after several years of floods, especially last year. The funding has come from Transport New South Wales grant for fixing local roads and potholes, which was announced at the beginning of the year. Armidale Regional Council has so far received $635,000, and that's from a $500 million package. A flood watch is in place for the Peel and Namoy River catchments tonight as the low pressure system moves across parts of the region. The State Emergency Service is urging residents to stay alert and not drive through floodwaters. There's been a steady stream of rain this past week. Tamworth's monthly total has climbed to 130 millimetres compared to 30 the month before. And now the Bureau of Meteorology have put out the alert. We are on flood watch tonight and tomorrow. So the combination of low pressure system and low tropical moisture is causing these widespread thunderstorms. But thankfully, that will ease quite quickly into Wednesday night and Thursday. The State Emergency Service is predicting some areas across the region could receive up to 100 50 millimetres of rain. Minor flooding is a possibility with the Peel and Namoy river catchments. The risk for this is very low at this time. However, we are monitoring the river systems and the catchments. Tomorrow afternoon, areas west of the region, such as Mori and Narrabri, could see winds of up to 30 kilometres per hour. Residents are told to secure outdoor furniture and keep pets inside. Mother Nature uh, will take its course, but when warnings are given to us, we, while it seems unlikely, we still need to be prepared just in case. Despite the alerts, SES is assuring members of the public the risk is low, but to keep an eye out and not drive through floodwaters. Yeah, a flood watch is something that goes out and is quite routine. Unfortunately, sometimes the terminology and the language used around flood watches can cause a heightened level of awareness. Once you've been through a flood, and especially if it's had a major effect on your home, or the business that you operate, it's not something that will leave you very quickly. Rex Quayle, Seven News. 
Well, Kirsty is here now for a look at today's weather conditions. And Kirsty, those storms and showers overnight led to some pretty humid conditions today. It sure did. Nick and Maddie, hello to you both and good evening, everyone. We definitely woke to a very muggy morning following those very warm overnight temperatures and moist winds too. We did have significant downpours overnight around 3 a.m. An intense storm cell dropped 20 millimetres of rain in just half an hour at Narrabri with 40 millimetres recorded by 9 a.m. Showers this morning did become more widespread though although we didn't see anywhere near as much rain about a millimetre and a half has been in the gauge for Maury while Glen Innes in the east has already picked up about a millimetre temperatures mild the 20s and the high teens for the east and into the low 30s about Gunnada a second system is expected this evening there is the chance of more widespread wet weather and some possible storms I'll have a look at tomorrow's wet weather forecast though a little after sport a lot to keep our eye on thanks for that Kirsty. see you in a couple of minutes Still to come in 7 News, a group of Gundalar locals raise money for cancer patients. And local nurseries and garden centres welcome the cooler conditions. And a little later on, this news hour, a gunman on the run and a woman arrested for hindering police after a drive-by shooting. Plus, a detainee that's freed from immigration detention goes missing and the Middle Eastern truce extended as more Israeli and Palestinian prisoners are released. The full details coming your way, 6.30 tonight. See you then. Welcome back. A group of volunteers have helped raise thousands of dollars for cancer patients across the Gunnedah region. The money has helped patients pay for medication, transport and accommodation during their treatment. It's not hard to see why Can Assist in Gunnedah is finding volunteers and raising incredible funds. The two women in charge is Kate Knight and Linda Lee and they both exude kindness and positivity. They've had a journey of breast cancer, which is why they make it their mission to raise funds for other people experiencing the disease. I told my family when I was first diagnosed that um, no negativity, it's all going to be positive. The funds raised help ease costs of treatment, travel and medication. Just paying your rates or your electricity, your phone bill, because if you're um, diagnosed, sometimes your income stops. So, yeah, being able to help people with finance, that's what we're all about. This year alone, they've helped 70 people in the Gunnedah region and have raised $39,000. You can find them at a rugby match on weekends or holding fundraisers. And all the generous donations from the community is greatly appreciated. We have lots of people ring us and say, look, we want to give donations. So all the money we raise stays local. So we only help local patients. Volunteers might be hard to come by for most community groups. However, it's not a problem for Can Assist, with 30 members and a range of ages. We are such a a happy-go-lucky group and we have lots of fun while we're raising those funds and people see through social media, through our local paper, um, see what we're up to and they just want to be part of it. Olivia Babb, 7 News. Local nurseries and garden centres are welcoming the cooler conditions this week with plants and flowers getting a well-deserved water. But dry conditions will arrive again and local businesses are sharing their best tricks to help keep those gardens healthy. Despite the lack of rain this summer, business at Heemskirk's nursery is booming. We're hoping to expand and if not stay and become if not one of the best um, nurseries in New South Wales. The recent rainfall has been welcomed by many nurseries and gardeners. Most plants need about 30 millimetres of water each week to be healthy and with rain steadily pouring down, it saved people from taking the water out of local dams. Try to avoid shallow watering, like watering every afternoon, seven days a week. You don't need to do that depending on what you're planting and depending on what your soils are. Having good soil is important to restrict water usage. Areas around the Peel River are ideal for gardeners as the mixture of sand, silt and clay allows it to hold water for long. When the plant is getting developed or getting established, water small amounts uh, over a longer period of time to get the roots down nice and deep. Belinda's best tips and tricks once it gets really hot is to water the plants early in the morning and to make sure other things like weeds don't suck up extra moisture. I think we just need to be wise and just take on um, what we're able to, like, to be able to maintain. Uh, don't be too ambitious. Rex Quayle, 7 News. 
Small business owners are being urged to be on high alert for scams. The Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise says the number of criminals impersonating businesses or government agencies such as the Australian Taxation Office is rising. Business owners are encouraged to take the time to ensure they have safeguards in place to protect their businesses from being scammed. Up next in 7 News, trainers and jockeys brave the rain for the final day of spring racing. And the New England hockey team takes home the win. Tomorrow on Sunrise, say goodbye to your biggest bills. How cash-strapped households can save up to $11,352 a year. We'll show you the simple steps. See you in the morning. Welcome back. The Under-15s Indoor Hockey State Championships have now wrapped up in orange. Hockey New England defeated Newcastle to win the boys' state title. It was a goal fest in the final. New England captain Archie Clark's drag flicking was deadly on penalty corners. He also had the skill to share it around. The state championship final was fast-paced and unpredictable. One thing that became apparent, though, was Archie Clark's ability to finish inside the circle. After a blistering first half, New England led Newcastle five goals to nil at half-time. The second half started in similar fashion, New England wasting no time finding the back of the net. Oh. Captain Clark had his side humming along nicely in their bid to repeat as state champions. The skipper also showing off some deft touch in the assist department. In the dying minutes of the match, Clark took control and steered his side to victory, casually burying one top bins to put the win on ice. We went in with a plan to press one of their defenders so we could really get up, you know, put a few goals in early because we find if you get an early lead, you know, put you on the good foot and we scored in about the first four minutes, which put us on a good note. New England defeating Newcastle to be crowned state champions. That was a pretty good win. Um, had 8-0. It was pretty good. Um, short corners were very good. Thanks to our flicker, Luke and Archie. Hockey New England have been dominant from day one of the tournament right through to the final on day three, winning the state championship for a second year in a row. This year, undefeated. Mac Reed Snare, 7 News. Trainers and jockeys who braved the gloomy weather at the Tamworth Jockey Club for the final race day of spring. The track sitting at a soft five for most of the day with punters enjoying a seven race meeting at the club. We just completed our renovation so this rain's um, very welcomed here and it's just um, made the grass perfect and it's nice and green out there. The next meeting will take place on December the 12th. Northern New South Wales football is calling on young Indigenous players to apply for their talented Indigenous scholarship. The program is aimed at First Nations players aged 13 to 17 who are looking to advance their skills in the sport. They will be um, training um, under different coaches and it's just, yeah, it's all about just more opportunities for Indigenous players. Really Applications close on Friday, December 22nd. Bendemir's Josh Hazelwood has been let go by his Indian Premier League side ahead of the upcoming IPL auction. The Royal Challengers Bangalore announcing some baby news on his behalf with Josh and wife Sharina expecting their first child in March. The move puts an end to the deal worth a whopping $1.4 million. The North Tamworth Bears have re-signed their co-captain for another year, with Josh Schmieldl deciding to return for one more season. It's a huge boost to the defending premiers, with Josh opting to stay on. That's despite considering retiring at the end of 2023. Joining him in the lineup next year will be last season's leading scorer, Mitch Sheridan. Up next in 7 News, Kirsty's back, and she's got your all-important local weather forecast. That's next. Welcome back, everyone. A low-pressure trough is triggering widespread showers and thunderstorms, some severe. This system will drift southeast tonight and into tomorrow, with the wet weather increasing for eastern parts of the New South Wales and Victoria. A second low-pressure system is likely to develop around the south coast tomorrow morning, assisted by strong onshore winds. Inland regions expecting a little bit of a reprieve before a new trough spills some more light rain into northern New South Wales over the weekend. Now, six hourly rainfall totals could reach 
50 to 150 millimetres through some southern and southeastern pockets of our state. Up to 15 to 20 millimetres is likely over the New England and the northwest over the next 24 hours or so. Possibly heavier totals though if isolated thunderstorms develop. Scattered rain is likely to continue overnight tonight too and continue tomorrow across the day with that chance of thunderstorms. Severe thunderstorms risks will extend to the northern inland and towards the north, north coast tomorrow. About Tamworth and Armadale, we can expect between about 8 to 15 millimetres of rain, but of course that chance of localised heavy downpours embedded within those thunderstorms if they do become severe. Very strong windy weather, 30 to 40 kilometre an hour winds that lending to the risk of damaging wind gusts. The mid-20s for Armadale, the high 20s in Inverell, the low 20s in Walker. Clearing skies for our Thursday, a sunny day in fact, certainly for most of the morning. We're also expecting those gusty winds to stick around up to 30 kilometres an hour in the west, up to 40 kilometres an hour across the northern tableland. The chance of some storms developing towards the Queensland border, a top of 29 for Scone and 26 in Tenterfield. Through to the end of our working week, but also the start of December and the start of summer, there is that chance of showers returning, mainly through the afternoon and evening. At this stage though we're not expecting any more than just around a millimetre or two but again storms are likely throughout the day. It will be another windy day with those temperatures up to the high 20s in the east. Inverell and Murrurundi reaching at the low 30s. To our seven day forecast some showers are possible into the weekend and into early next week. Starting to clear and certainly warm up for our first full week of summer conditions looking much drier following tonight and tomorrow's wet weather and that risk of isolated severe storms too. It sure is going to be interesting for the next 24 hours. Yeah, Thanks, Kirstie. See you later. And that is all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. You can always catch up on our website or, of course, at 7+. plus. Right now, though, Dan has your national news. Have a lovely night. See you again tomorrow night from 6 o'clock. We'll see you then.